this nature diaries guy said I'm giving Laura a tour of some of the places I grew up and uh, the places I really got involved with nature so I'm just driving past the I won't show you the school because it's a typical school but I'm just driving past the primary school and that's where I first planted a tree when I was about six or seven years old and that memory has really stuck with me this stretch of uh, grassland there if you've attended any of our amphibian talks before this is the place I was telling you about where it used to be a drainage ditch and it used to be teamed with amphibians so the woodland still remains and that's adjacent to the motorway uh, there's a bit of scrubland there now uh, looks like they planted a few new trees but it used to be a really vital ditchland habitat just on the estate I grew up on and one of the cool things nature based on this estate is all the streets are uh, named after birds so we're just going past Avocet Drive now and we're on Moller and Road and uh, we're just heading to where I grew up which is uh, Dunlin Drive and another place what really inspired me to get involved with animals is this place next to me is the animals in distress so when I was a kid I used to always go in there and look at the animals but this nature diary is not just about me going and taking a trip down Nostalgia Lane. So the rest of it's going to be filled with fun species and habitats. So I hope you enjoy. So after that little drive around, we've arrived at the old river. So this is a place I grew up. We used to swim in here. We used to go fishing in here. But we also used to emerge ourselves in nature here. So it is near a town, so there's stuff like that where the bins are really overflowing. And when I was a kid, these houses on the rear bank which you can see weren't here so there used to be grass fields and stuff there uh, but I've got to be careful I don't fall into that mindset of a shifting uh, baseline syndrome where I'm thinking about how nature used to be when I was a kid and not looking further back when it was absolutely teeming with nature before my life actually even began but the old river is called the old river it's actually a lake but it used to be part of the river Irwell until a couple of hundred years ago they built the ship canal and they wanted it to be straighter obviously for the boats and so forth so they cut through the river and it left a few of these little lakes uh, along the course so there's actually two here at the old river and there's like a wet woodland in between so this wet woodland's protected habitat as well and we're approaching that soon I don't think we can get in it anymore it seems really overgrown which is perhaps a, a good thing because it keeps people out but we used to catch uh, lots of frogs and toads in there when we were kids. One of the more unusual species we get down on the lake is actually an invasive species or an alien species. It's the red-eared terrapin. So these animals have been on this lake for at least 30 years. I remember them as a kid. So that might indicate there's been separate reintroductions of people dumping them in the river. So if you think back to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, a lot of people bought these animals and they were about this big. Once they started growing rapidly, people just started releasing them into the wild. So there's been a population here for at least 30 years, but the locals seem to love them. They give them names and they've remained in the lake, so no one's actually removed them. So these terrapins, and we have one swimming over there and just one on the log as well. These terrapins are reptiles, so that means they're um, exothermic. They rely on an external heat source. And because of this, it means they can't really breed because they need specific temperatures for their eggs to incubate successfully. So for males, the temperatures are around 21 to 27 degrees constant. For females, it's even warmer. So let's just say the males did actually all latch out as males, then they won't be able to reproduce anyway. So the population will not spread as it would say a grey squirrel or an American mink or some of the other notorious invasive species we have. So that's why we turn these more of an alien species. They're not colonizing. They can have an impact on local flora and fauna and we'll discuss some of that as we progress but in the local area people seem to enjoy these animals and I must admit they are quite cool to watch. These terrapins can get quite big and reach a size of up to 40 centimetres but it's much more common to have a size of around 20 to 30 centimetres or around dinner plate size. 
Now the females are always bigger than the males and the males you can tell as well have much longer claws at the front and they use these to grip the shell during mating. Also during mating the males will often wave their paws in front of the females and it's thought that this might be them whifting pheromones towards the females to attract them for breeding. So you might be able to hear him in the background and Laura's trying to capture him but there's actually a few kingfishers on the opposite bank so we think they might be on a nest and just fledging at the moment because we've seen what look like adult birds flying in but there's lots of noise and we keep seeing it seeing younger birds they've not got the bright colours as such yet just popping in and out of what looks like a nest area under the tree along the bank so hopefully Laura's down there trying to get them, so hopefully we'll have some kingfishers in this one too. Oh hi! <laughs> guys we've uh, managed to find the kingfisher which is amazing so Laura's getting some good footage and it just shows there was a pollution incident in this uh, lake a few years ago but they managed to restock it with a commercial course fish there's been houses built around it uh, there's litter everywhere but nature's still bouncing back I mentioned uh, terrapins are reptiles and reptiles are ectothermic so they rely on the external heat source to warm their blood and get their body up to temperature and they can do this by basking so there's one basking on the log behind us and Laura's got some better footage but that poses the question what actually happens to these terrapins in winter well actually they perform something called brumation so it's a bit like a hibernation but it's not a true hibernation and essentially what they can do is slow their body right down and become very sluggish at the bottom of the lake and this allows them to survive in colder climates such as those in the UK. Some of the issues with terrapins is that they will take small fish and this can bring them into conflict with people who obviously see uh, coarse fishing. It's also thought they can take smaller ducklings as well but the truth be told as they get bigger they generally eat more plants than they do animals so they will have a, a mixed diet especially as the animal gets older it's also worth remembering they are an alien species but there is another species of turtle which is thought to have lived in the UK thousands of years ago Well guys, that brings us to the end of another episode of Nature Diaries. But just before I go, I want to leave you with some food for thought. So we've mentioned the invasive terrapin, but did you know that there used to be another turtle species which was native to the UK? That's the European pond turtle, so it's thought that this animal used to swim in wetlands a few thousand years ago. Now there are still some populations in the UK, 
but it's thought that these have uh, come from the pet trade. Other people think that they've been here all along, where others suggest that it was never actually a native species. But we do know the European pond turtle can live in slightly cooler climates and they found in areas such as Denmark, which is at the same um, altitude, and also places like Switzerland used to have these animals too. So, should we return them? Could they live here? If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.